Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Closing Out the Week. I'm your host, Mark Alvarado, and I'm about to take you on a journey. That journey is a journey that you've already taken yourself because you've lived through it. I'm taking you through the week of June 29th through July 3rd. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, child. We're going through it. Uh, so let's just go right into it. Let's see this. Let's see these uh, these stories. What are we going to talk about today? I I I, I posted about like uh, I I I allowed for people on Instagram to request stories or suggest stuff. I didn't hear anything back, so I got to choose. I'm happy about that. I just wanted to see if people wanted to you know chime in. No, apparently no one did, which is totally fine with me because I get to choose what I want to talk about. Um. Not going to lie, the first two stories are pretty depressing, uh, but I'll end it with something a little bit more lighthearted, and then we'll go into the theme of the week. What will that be? Well, I don't know. You're going to have to stay tuned. All right, so the first storyline of the week that I'm going to be highlighting, um, states are pausing their reopening plans and are imposing mask requirements as the virus surges. Dun, dun, dun. I know here in California it's happening. I know that uh, Governor Gavin Newsom, uh, the alter ego of Gavi the Savvy Steezy, who was on the show on Wednesday, um, he just limited uh, a lot of businesses again. He he forced bars to close, basically. Um, restaurants have to be outside only. Um, and... Cases are spiking a lot. They're booming. They're straight booming right now. Uh, So let's see. What does this say? Texans. Okay, we're going to be talking about Texans. All right. Texans are now required to wear masks in public to help stem the spread of the coronavirus. Governor Greg Abbott uh, announced on Thursday. Okay, so Texas is doing pretty bad. And let's see. Is there anything about California here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so with California, um, about 19 counties have over 70% of the population, um, as Governor Newsom said in his uh, little spiel that he had, I believe on Tuesday. I'm not sure when he said these things, but he definitely did say them. Actually, no, it was today or yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. The first was yesterday. Um, So he said that uh, in those 19 counties... Things are getting pretty, pretty bad um, in terms of coronavirus cases. So the order that he is implementing, uh, let's see, affects restaurants, wineries, zoos, and museums uh, in those 19 counties. Uh, Like I said, they have to shift everything outdoors. Um, Of course, music venues are still closed. Bars are reclosing again. And, you know, in a, in a, in a moment of optimism, he said, we bent the curve once before and we will bend the curve again. Yeah, Gavin, the whole point though, is not to just bend the curve. It's to keep it down. It's to keep it bent and it's to continue to keep it bent. Because if we constantly go through this cycle where we have the hope we think things are going to go back to normal and then it comes crashing down again and we just are on this roller coaster ride this sine wave of emotions and a sine wave of policy and the sine wave of life uh it's not healthy for people i would say uh mentally specifically it's not healthy for people to be going through these ups and downs constantly when we should have just stayed fucking closed Everybody was saying it, but we live in a capitalistic society. And in that type of society, businesses have to be open or else everything falls apart. And when you can't have businesses open, they have to resort to reopening businesses before it's time to do so, before people are ready to, before uh, it's healthy to. Because of the type of society we, we, we live in, this is the Achilles heel. This situation is the Achilles heel. Well, there's a lot of Achilles heels, but this is one of the big Achilles heels 
of capitalism is that when businesses have to close, most businesses have to close, the economy struggles, people get unemployed, and there becomes a lot of issues. So, things are getting worse when it comes to corona. Wear your masks, please. Because we are all trying to get out of this. We all want to, you know, we all want to uh, not have to stay in our houses forever, right? So put in the work now by not doing anything now. (laughs) So that way we can have a much longer period of time where we can have hope that things will get better. Trust me. It's better that way. It's a lot better that way. Okay, second story of the day. This is the one I was kind of most excited about to talk because it talks about long-term projections. I'm a man of the long term, for better or worse. And that's what we're talking about with this story. The government, a government watchdog says unemployment won't recover until 2030. Yeah, I mean... Dude, the, the the unemployment right now is uh really bad. It was 11.1% in June. That's quite a bit. I'm not sure how much that stacks up historically across the entirety of the US. But it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad because before we were at 11% the the unemployment rate was 3.5%. That's pretty uh that's pretty low compared to 11.1%. But uh the congressional budget office projects that uh about, you know, at the end of 2021 we'll be at 7.6% and then 6.9% at the end of 2022. And then 4, 4.4% unemployment by the end of 2030. So things will get better if things if, 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 if we all stay inside and we all wear masks and are considerate people and uh, businesses give us a fucking break and the government gives us a fucking break um, and helps us out monetarily for some time. Then I think it's realistic to think that by 2030 we'll get back to where we were this past year. But, but if that doesn't happen, I don't see these projections as being accurate. Of course, time will tell, but who knows? Um, I just know anecdotally, okay, a lot of my friends are on unemployment at the moment. It's pretty bad out there, especially for young people. Um, you know, a lot of my friends don't have jobs anymore or they just got back to their jobs and now they have to go back on unemployment because their jobs are closing again. You know, of course we can't project what's going to happen in the future. Of course we can't predict how things are going to be like a hundred percent. But if the past six months has been any indication of just how Americans are, how Americans react to these sort of things. It's going to be a long road to get back to where we were. Economically, it's going to be tough. But of course, we'll see. I mean, like I said, who knows really what's going to happen. Um, It's just tough when the past six months has been filled with nothing but just uh, the negative outcomes coming to fruition. But that's not... Historically speaking, you know, not everything that's happened has been super bad. Not everything. I know a lot of things have been that way, have turned out that way. I would even say maybe arguably a majority of things, but not everything. So who knows? Who knows? Now let's get to more lighter topics. Yay. All right. Cam Newton is now signed by the New England Patriots. Sorry, okay? I know. Some people don't like sports talk. Some people love sports. If you don't like sports, just skip to the fucking theme of the week. I'll have the tag in the description. But if not, 
Here are my quick thoughts on Cam Newton in a Patriots uniform. I saw this coming from a mile away. I knew, I just had a, okay, I didn't know, but I had a really good feeling that Bill Belichick was just waiting in the wings for the right moment to sign Cam Newton at his lowest point in terms of value. Nobody was picking him up, which is crazy in itself because this guy, yeah, he was beat up a lot. Um, he was like the most hit, hit quarterback in the NFL, and it's not even close. He was he was the most hit by far, um, which you could say there are definitely uh, racist reasons why um, he was the most hit. You could say that for sure because a lot of referees, for some reason, would just kind of look the other way when he got hit, which is kind of fucked up. Um, there's a lot of footage on it on YouTube if you're interested in that. Definitely go check it out. But uh, in terms of why he went to the Patriots, it makes sense to me because for for Cam Newton, this is not about football. This is not about money. Well, it is about football, but it's not about money. It's about respect, right? I saw a quote from him, I think yesterday, that it's not about money. It's about respect. He's been disrespected in the media and by the NFL for over a year, for some reason, people just have totally sold their Cam Newton stock. And there's not a real good reason as to why. So for him to go to the Patriots, he's going into a system with arguably the best coach ever to coach a football team at the helm. And he's going to resurrect, quote unquote, his career. So I'm very excited to see what happens. Uh, I'm not excited to see the Patriots be good again. Uh, <laughs> But I am excited to see Cam Newton kind of do Cam Newton things because when he is, is producing, the NFL is a better, uh, better product in general. So I'm excited. Hopefully we have a season. Uh, I'm not sure we will. But if we do, I'm excited to see him. Now it is time for the theme of the week. And the theme for this week is comfort. Like most ideas or concepts, comfort can be a good or bad thing. Too little comfort is bad because like if you have no place to really rest your head or you get no relief in terms of work or in terms of stress, in terms of uh, money even, you can get to a really bad place and you would long for that comfort. You would do anything to have some semblance of comfort, right? But flip it around, having too much comfort, that can also be bad, right? We got too comfortable before this pandemic, before this social unrest happened. We saw it back in 2015 with Ferguson or 2014. I, I don't remember the specific year, but we saw it with that with Ferguson. We saw it. And people got a little uncomfortable in in that moment. But then we went back to normal, quote unquote normal. And now we're uncomfortable again. And we don't know what to do. And there's people who want to go back to that normalcy, want to go back to that comfort. But life is about balance, right? And if you're too comfortable, it's bad. Us as a society, we got too comfortable. We're the richest country ever to exist in the entire world. So, of course, we're going to be too comfortable. We're going to take for granted our comfort. And now I understand why a lot of people uh, would want to go back to that comfort, would want to seek out that comfort, want to want to be cozy again and it, uh, blissfully ignorant to everything that's going on. But I am here to tell you it's okay to be uncomfortable. It's all right. My dad, you know, one of his favorite quotes or one of, I don't even know if it's a quote, but one of the fa- his favorite things to say is when you feel uncomfortable, that's a good thing. When you feel uncomfortable in terms of changing your mind or in terms of becoming enlightened to certain ideas that you weren't privy to before this all happened, that's a good thing. Because obviously there's situations where just being uncomfortable is being uncomfortable. It's a bad thing. You need to get out of the situation. I get it. I don't mean those situations. I mean 
these mental situations where your 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 third eye is awakened right you become woke or whatever it's okay to be uncomfortable i'm uncomfortable doing this podcast every week two podcasts a week now i get nervous before every single podcast but i do it because i know for one i have to because there's people that listen to this that want the show and two I need to get through that anxiety because I will feel so good afterwards. But if I would have stayed comfortable, the show never would have started, right? Because I was nervous. It feels better. I'm more comfortable not doing it. But then I finish it. Man, I feel damn good. And everything we're experiencing right now is uncomfortable, right? But eventually, once we get through this, we'll feel damn good. And I know that I started off this episode pretty pessimistic. I'm not saying that I'm not now, but I'm trying to be more positive um, in terms of everything. And uh, we all have those moments for sure. Uh, but I know that in the moment it sucks right now. I, it's uncomfortable. It, it's not good. It can be even painful what we're going through. But from this uncomfortableness, from this lack of comfort, will come growth. We will grow from this. We will be better from this. And we will feel good again at some point. I don't know when, but at some point. And I think this is all I got for this show. Um, if you enjoyed what you heard, please follow us on Instagram uh, at the closers podcast on facebook at closers podcast like our facebook page there and also subscribe to our youtube channel we are the closers podcast uh i will be back for closing out the week next week next friday uh we will also have our normal closers podcast on wednesday and quinn will start your week off right with hang 10 with quinn kalani stay tuned for that thank you guys have a great weekend don't party too hard because I want this pandemic to be over. Um, if, you, if you're celebrating 4th of July, have a great time, I guess. If you're not, um, yeah, I respect you a lot. All right, guys, take care.